For the last year and a half now, I've been working with the government of Liberia and a group called Mercy Ships, trying to come up with strategies to deal with disability issues. This is a country that's been torn by war and a lot of horrible things over the last 10 or 20 years. And the Liberian people need to heal. And, and one of the important things for them is to have these many different war victims and people whose medical problems weren't treated over this time come back to full productivity. I've been holding meetings with the government and with other people trying to figure out exactly how they can change things. There's this wonderful woman named Ellen Johnson who's the president. She's an American trained PhD economist and by all accounts she's honest, ethical and she deeply cares. And Ellen is really bringing this country back. So you begin to see the sparks of real dignity and people trying to get industry together and trying to get civil society together. I spent my time trying to teach the leaders of the country more than I did spending time in clinics. So my typical day was spent uh, maybe a half day meeting with the Minister of Health and the Dean of the Medical School and the Minister of, the, of, the, of Education trying to help them to understand the economics and the functional uh, ways to move forward with rehabilitation. When I went out into the countryside I tried not to be a doctor but um, it was sad. I'd, I'd see people who had had polio. Now that's a stupid disease. It's supposed to be gone but people have polio and their nerves would have recovered, but because nobody ever taught them to stretch out their arm, it was so contracted that they'd never have a useful arm again. And I'd see people with spinal cord injuries that had treatable problems who were begging on the street. I'd see children with disabilities who, who not only had the primary disability like we have in America, but ended up having pressure sores and contractures and, and their hearts and minds were, were pretty hopeless. I think the teaching is critical. And, and I mean traditionally, for instance, Liberia's medical school has five, count them, five core faculty members, and they're desperate for doctors. But I also mean in non-traditional ways. I spent so much time trying to teach the president and the vice president's office and the ministers how it cost them a lot of money to have people live with disabilities. One of the great advantages of coming to them as a professor here at the University of Michigan is that I have immediate credibility in knowing what I'm talking about. And, and so they listen better. Uh, the teaching uh, is, is a really important thing for us to really make sure that what we do is sustained after we leave. We should really feel empowered to be bold and to make big things happen when we visit these countries. But of course it's their country. If we don't really get under the skin of the people in the country and understand what they need, everything we do falls flat. There's so much that can be done in these countries if they only can dream as big as what we really do here in the States. You know, I think another faculty member who's got any interest in doing this kind of work in their field needs to do it, get on the ground, try it out, find out that you can actually spend time in these countries and be okay, and then back up and say, what is my role as a University of Michigan faculty member? And you'll find out that your role is to help lead and provide a vision and find some resources internationally. So step back from simply rescuing the sick person and think about processes and systems that you can affect.